for I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way also the chalice, after supper, saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Nice to see you all this morning. Thank you all for watching. We follow the Pray Together prayers for the Mass. So it's the 22nd Sunday of the year in ordinary time. So as we come to pray, we have the final section of the Sermon on the Mount today. Let us prepare our hearts to listen to God's word and to receive Jesus in the Holy Eucharist as we call to mind our sins and pray for our fathers. Lord Jesus, you are the living bread come down from heaven. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you nourish us with your word. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for our fathers. Let us pray. God of might, giver of every good gift, put into our hearts the love of your name, so that by deepening our sense of reverence, you may nurture in us what is good, and by your watchful care, keep safe what you have nurtured our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second book of Kings, chapter 24, verses 8 through 17. Jehoiakim was 18 years old when he began to reign, and he reigned three months in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Nehushta, daughter of Elnathan of Jerusalem. He did evil in the sight of the Lord, just as his forebearers had done. At that time, the officials of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, attacked Jerusalem, and the city became under siege. Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon himself, arrived at the city, while his servants or besieging it. Then jo jo Jehoiakim, uh, king of Judah, together with his mother, his ministers, officers, and functionaries, surrendered to the king of Babylon, who in the eighth year of his reign took him captive. And he carried off all the treasures of the temple of the Lord and those of the palace and broke up all the gold utensils that Solomon, king of Israel, had provided in the temple of the Lord, as the Lord had foretold. He deported all Jerusalem, all the officers and men of the army, 10,000 in number, and all the craftsmen and smiths. None were left among the people of the land except the poor. He deported Jehoiakim to Babylon and also led captive from Jerusalem to Babylon the king's mother and wives, his functionaries, and the chief men of the land. The king of Babylon also led captives to Babylon, all 7,000 men of the army and a 1,000 craftsmen and smiths, all of them trained soldiers. In place of Jehoiakim, the king of Babylon appointed his uncle, Nadaniah, and changed his name to Zedekiah. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Respons responsorial Psalm, Psalm 79. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. O God, 
The nations have come into your inheritance. They have defiled your holy temple. They have laid Jerusalem in ruins. They have given the corpse of your servants as food to the birds of heaven, the flesh of your faithful ones to the beasts of the earth. For the glory of your name, O Lord, deliver us. They have poured out their blood like water round about Jerusalem, and there is no one to bury them. We have become the reproach of our neighbors, the scorn and derision of those around us. O oh Lord, how long? Will you be angry forever? Will your jealousy turn burn like fire? For the glory of your name, O oh Lord, deliver us. Remember not against us the iniquities of the past. May your compassion quickly come to us, for we are brought very low. For the glory of your name, O oh Lord, deliver us. Help us, O oh God, our Savior, because of the glory of your name. Deliver us and pardon our sins for your name's sake. and we will come to him. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons in your name? Did we not do mighty deeds in your name? Then I will declare to them solemnly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you evildoers. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rains fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, but it did not collapse, it had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine, but does not act on them, will be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rains fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowd were astonished at his teaching. For he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The year 597 BC was the fall of Jerusalem, and the people were taken captive. That's what the first reading was about today, and they were taken to Babylon. When I was a teenager, the number one psalm was one of the psalms. Based, uh, singing about the river, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat and wept. It was expressing the, the, the grief of the Jewish people being in exile, and eventually they came back. But this was 125 years after the fall of Samaria. And the fall of Samaria, the fall of Babylon, had the same reason for the downfall, was infidelity to God. That's how the spiritual writer saw it. The people had turned from God, put their trust in men rather than God. And that's a message that applies always. We always have to keep our trust and focus in God, not in human beings, not in kings or in earthly powers, but in the Almighty God. And we need to pray for our leaders that God will guide them and that God will be with them. And the gospel today is the very end of the Sermon on the Mount. Remember, Matthew is presenting Jesus as the new teacher, the new lawgiver, the new Moses. And he begins the Sermon on the Mount as his first discourse with the Beatitudes. Blessed are they. Then he tells the people they have to be the light and the salt. He tells them how to pray. He teaches them that the law has to be in their hearts, not on the lips. It's not enough to say an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, but love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Go the extra mile, forgive not seven times, but seventy times seven. 
and it's a beautiful teaching. He tells us he came not to abandon the law, but to fulfill the law. And then the conclusion is today's passage, where he says, not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but whoever does the will of my Father. That's the bottom line. We have to build our house on the rock, Jesus Christ. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and he's the one that we have to follow. Uh, it's not enough to give lip service. We have to put God and Jesus number one in our hearts. And then the second discourse, which is the cost of discipleship, reinforces this, saying that Jesus has to come ahead of family, has to come ahead of everything, in order for us to take up our cross each day and follow any steps. Amazing phrase to take up your cross, because the cross was a symbol of Roman persecution, and yet Jesus sees it as a symbol of following in his footsteps. God has to come first ahead of everything. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. Let us pray that we can put God number one in our lives, in our hearts, and follow him always and do his will. We pray to the Lord. Lord God. For all people who have fallen away from God, may the Holy Spirit come to them and in killing them the fire of God's love, and may they have a personal relationship with God. We pray to the Lord. Lord God. For all our fathers living and deceased, as we offer the novena of masses for our fathers, we pray to the Lord. Lord God. For our leaders, that they will always look to God for guidance and direction, we pray to the Lord. Lord God. Every day people ask for prayer. So many people dealing with illnesses, dealing with death, dealing with tragedy. We lift up all those who have asked for special prayers. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Let us pause now and make our own special needs known to God. Almighty God, we thank you for this day and all its opportunities. May we do our best to keep you number one as we pray through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless you, God, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. And the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands, for praise the Lord in his name. May this sacred offering, O Lord, confer in us always the blessing of salvation, that what it celebrates in mystery, it may accomplish in power through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for at the last supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb, the acceptable gift of perfect grace, nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery. You made them holy, so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united in one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wonderful sacrament, so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing in your song and adoration, and we with all the hosts of angels cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And today we will pray the first Eucharistic prayer for various needs. 
You're indeed holy and to be glorified, O oh God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we're gathered by his love. And when his once for his disciples and now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led to his passion and death on the cross of the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love, we may be counted now and into the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church, which is in most holy trinity past Christiane, by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis our Pope, Louis our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the day whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, who blessed Joseph her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. <laughs> Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look down on our sins, for on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I have not worried you that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. 
May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Renewed by this bread from the heavenly table, we beseech you, Lord, that being the food of charity, it may confirm our hearts and stir us to serve you and our neighbor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for Pat. Thank you, Father Patty. You know, sometimes when we look at the scripture, we fail to pay any attention to the entrance antiphon. And today it comes from Psalm 28. The Lord is the strength of his people, a saving refuge for the one he has anointed. Save your people, Lord. Bless your heritage. Govern them forever. Today, the first reading is from the second book of Kings, 28, 8, 17. The books of Kings tell the story of Israel, from the ascension of Solomon to the destruction of Jerusalem. That is from the highest point in Israel's history, the dedication of the temple unto Solomon, to its lowest point, the destruction of the temple and the Babylonian exile. Despite the constant ministry of God's prophets, as we heard on Sunday from the prophet Jeremiah, 20 verses 10 through 13, he preached to them gloom and doom and actually told them they were to surrender Jerusalem. The Israelites failed to change their ways and that led to division and ultimately to the destruction of the kingdom of David. Psalm 79 comes from the third book of the Psalter, which is the darkest of the five books. They are often called the Songs of Lamentation. These Psalms reflect dire distress and crisis for the whole kingdom of David. Psalm 74 and 79 refer specifically to the sacking and destruction of Jerusalem. These are prayers for help, appealing to God's covenant relationship with Israel. Matthew 7 verses 21 to 29, as Father has just said, is the last part of the Sermon on the Mount. Today's Jesus parable is contrasting a house built on rock and one built on sand. Those who trust in the words of Jesus build their faith on rock, while those who do not trust the works of Jesus build their house on sand. Just as a house on sand will collapse in a storm, so will the person of weak faith collapse in the moment of trial. The person with faith founded on the rock of Jesus' words will survive like the house built on the rock. As true disciples, we are living stones called to bear good fruit for God's creation. We are called to build our lives on our faith in Jesus Christ, a firm foundation. The narrow gate is a gate of love and concern for others, based on the message of love as given by Jesus. At times it will bring joy, and at other times it will demand sacrifice. As Christians, we enter through 
the narrow gate for love of Jesus. Knowing Jesus' message is one thing, but living it is a sign of a true disciple. Our first reading in Psalm speaks of gloom and doom, for failure of the Israelites to obey God's commands, and they lament. In the Gospel of Matthew, we must listen to Jesus' teaching. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his rock, his house on rock. We must not only listen, we must act. Many of us are lamenting the current conditions of our nation and the world. The pandemic, and now protest, riots, the destruction of private property, the injustice of our citizens who are God's children. Many of us have allowed fear of these tribulations to take hold of us, especially the pandemic, which for many has threatened their faith in Jesus. Although Jesus tells us over 300 times, do not be afraid. Bishop Barron so eloquently divide, describes fear as the result of our forgetting our deepest identity. We are created in the image and likeness of God at the foundation of our existence. We are one with the divine power that continually creates and sustains the universe. We are held and cherished by the infinite love of God. God, my friends, are in charge. We must look very carefully and use discernment when we listen to the media today. They are trying to do everything in their power to instill fear in the American people by their slanted reporting. They want us to be fearful. They want healthy people to remain isolated, which is in direct conflict to how God created us. In order for our bodies to resist viruses and infections, we must expose our bodies so that gradually we can build up our own immunity. People who have the virus need to be isolated, but not healthy people. The death rate from the COVID-19 is also inflated. Doctors and nurses are now speaking out, outraged when a person dies of like congestive heart failure. When that record goes to medical records for the filing of the birth certificate, it is changed to COVID-19. We must be very careful what we listen to and what we believe. Vaccines are big money makers for the pharmaceutical companies. Let us not fool ourselves. Bill Gates and Dr. Fauci promote vaccines. And they also have financial interest. If they don't own the pharmaceutical companies, they have financial interest in almost every pharmaceutical country. This weekend, I myself saw a tape. In 2017, I heard Dr. Fauci announce at a conference that in two to three years, we would be dealing with a surprise pandemic. Now just think about that, people. If Fauci knew in 2017 what was gonna be happening today, what has shut down our country, what has put fear in people, which has caused the deaths of millions and millions of people, don't you think we need to question what we are being told? There's no surprise that Fauci knew about this because there were laboratories working on this coronavirus, three right here in this United States and one in China. 
We must be very careful when we look at all of these issues. As American Catholics, we can no longer be naive. We cannot believe what we are being told. We must walk in faith and use reliable resources to guide us as to how we live. And please, please, we must pray that we become truly one nation. Forgive me. We must be one nation unto God and we must protect the rights of the most vulnerable. Whew. There are resources out there that can help us understand what is happening. One is a book called Virus Mania. This book was not written yesterday. It was written in 20, 2007, and it gives you information that happened in 1918 with the Spanish flu. You will understand while parents since the late 30s and early 40s have refused to have their children vaccinated. It also will shed a lot of light on HIV and cancer and all these other illnesses. I also encourage you, there's another book that just came out because this poor Catholic biologist has been on what do you call it, when she's not allowed to speak out. But her name is Judy, forgive me. Wrong piece of paper. Her name is Judy Miskabowski. The book's title is Plague of Corruption, Restoring Faith in the Promise of Science. EWTN is a beautiful channel if you want to hear the facts of what's happening without a political slant on them. Thank you for your attention. Very good, Nurse Pat. Thank you for all your medical insights. Got a cute email here. After all that, we need a laugh. Yes. Bob, a 70-year-old, extremely wealthy widower, showed up at the country club with a breathtakingly beautiful 25-year-old blonde who knocked everyone's socks off. She hung on Bob's arm and listened intently to his every word. His buddies at the club were all aghast. At the first chance, they cornered him and asked, Bob, how did you get the trophy girlfriend? Bob replied, girlfriend? She's my wife. They were blown over. So how did you persuade her to marry you? I lied about my age, replied Bob. What, you told you were only 50? Bob smiled and said, no, I told her I was 90. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you all for watching and let me just say those of you who are watching if you if you uh, go on the YouTube channel and search for Most Holy Trinity Past Christian it's a nice way to, to uh, watch it if you have access to the YouTube channel. Go in peace glorifying the Lord by your life. And let us pray together the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come Holy Spirit. Let us pray, O oh God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, it's not the heart of the faithful, granted by the same Holy Spirit, who may be truly wise and ever rejoice this consolation through Christ our Lord. Amen.